35. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Zoom, do you have it? Can y'all hear me? Uh, mute yourself. Yes. Okay. okay. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right, family. Job chapter 35. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the whole entire chapter to you here. And that's 16 verses. Okay. And family, believe it or not, this is one of uh, the shortest of Elihu's speeches. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Uh, Job chapter 35. And it reads, family, then Elihu said, Do you think it is right for you to claim that I'm righteous before God? For you also ask, what is, what's in it for me? What's the use of living a righteous life? I will answer you and all your friends too. Look up in the sky and see the clouds high above you. If you sin, how does that affect God? If you sin again and again, what effect will it have on him? Mm -hmm. If you're good, is this some great gift to him? What could you possibly give him? No, your sins affect only people like yourself. Mm -hmm. And your good deeds also affect only humans. People cry when they are oppressed. They groan beneath the power of the, of the mighty. Yet they don't ask, where is God, my creator? The one who gives songs in the night. Where is the one who makes us smarter than animals and wiser than the birds of the sky? And when they cry out, God does not answer because of their pride. But it is wrong to say God doesn't listen to say the Almighty isn't concerned. You say you can't see him, but he will bring justice if you only wait. You say he does not respond to sinners of anger. It's not greatly concerned about wickedness, but you are talking nonsense, Joe. You have spoken like a fool. Amen. 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 That's the word of God for the people of God. For those that are in person, can you recite the sermonic prayer with me? Those that are on Zoom, um, you can say it to yourself. Lord, prepare our hearts. Lord, Lord prepare, prepare our hearts to receive Your word. To receive Your word and prepare our spiritual hearing. And prepare our spiritual hearing to hear Your word. To hear Your word. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to move from illumination. To move from illumination to transformation. To transformation to application. To application. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. One second, family. I want to uh, share. There it is. Um, family, for our time together, I want to preach from the subject take a deeper look at suffering. Take a deeper look at suffering. Family, how many of us can agree early on in this sermon that there has been times where we have misplaced some things in our home, mm -hmm. in our car. And Malia, we looked mm -hmm. and we looked right. and we looked yeah. for it. We literally tore up the house <laughs> trying to find what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, we tore up the car trying to find what we were looking for. But then after we sat down and thought about that thing, Spirit speaks to us and say, you need to take another look. Mm -hmm. Family, here it is with the subject matter speaking of suffering, of forgiveness, pain, trials, Miss Perkins, tribulations. We often look at them in a natural way. Mm -hmm. God is telling us this afternoon that we are to take another look. Family, we should stop looking at suffering in the natural lens and start looking for the messages 
within our suffering. Family, if you all remember, we began our journey. Don't you remember? We began our journey looking into the narrative of Elihu. And Elihu, he steps into the book of Job in a mysterious way. Um, Jackie Scott, he doesn't give himself an introduction. He just comes in and just starts talking. And as he, um, as we open this series, it's more so an introduction leading into Elihu and the way he will shape how Job should really look at the suffering that he's going through. And family, as we moved into that, we began to set the stage, the introduction of who Elihu was, and set the stage for his argument against Job. And you, you all remember, we continued our conversation in Job chapter 33 and 34 with a question that we must ask ourselves daily. And that question is, are you listening? Mm -hmm. Are we listening I'm digging there with the intent to obey what God is telling us. Elihu wanted Job to hear what God was saying through suffering. Family, um, let's go on and just uh, come on in this sermon with me and keep me company. Here it is. How many of us, when we go through what we go through, the last thing that we want to do is to find out why uh, yeah, I'm going through this. And we say, Lord, why I'm going through this? Yeah. Watch this, uh, Lady Q, not to get an answer, but to get some validation. Right. Uh, why I'm going through, I, you know, I pay my tithes. I, I go to church and I sing in the choir. I fall out every once in a while. They got to put sheets on me. Why? I got to go through well. what I go through. And digging there, I come to discover. And the Lord had to help me with this. Why would God allow certain things to happen? Mm, and he came along early and said, there's an underlining to that question. Here it is. If I was God, I will do things differently. <laughs> Why does this have to happen? And now we have to thank God for Elihu, who comes, family, and he tells Job to take another look. All right. Family, how many of you all want to take another look Amen. of why you go through what you go through? Family, Elihu, you have to love Elihu. He, he's young, but he's very uh, yeah, rough around the edges. He's very tough. His approach is very direct. Um, so Virginia, he, he reminds me of a young version of you. Amen. Um, he's going to tell you how it is and how um, to put it and then be straightforward mm -hmm. and do it in a loving way. Amen. Now, here Amen. it is, family. He tells us mm -hmm. this look that he tells us. First of all, here's my first point. Um, the reason why he t tells us to take another look is because, watch this, we had an inappropriate look. Right. An inappropriate look. Verses 1 through 4. Y'all ready? Yeah. Then Elihu said, do you think it is right for you to Claim I'm righteous before God. For you also ask, what's in it for me? What's the use of living a righteous life? Verse 4, I will answer you and all your friends too. Elihu had just spoken at length about the justice of God, and now he's going to turn his attention back to Job and his friends. Mm -hmm. Basically, he asked Job this. Y'all ready? Do you think the way you have been acting has been just? Here it is. Elihu has been listening. And since he's been listening to this conversation that Job brings in, why well, did you all, uh, I, I, I agree with Elihu right here because Elihu said, um, based on what you're saying, Job, you're saying that you are more righteous than God. Job, you're saying based on your righteousness that you don't have a right to suffer and go through what you go through. Preach, uh, I, I come to discover that there are some Joes walking around here right now. All right now. There are some Joes that's sitting in church right now. There are some Joes right now that's probably looking at this live right now to say, Lord, I am too righteous to go through what I've been going through. Watch this, family. Can I put it right here? Uh, there is no such thing as righteousness that you have achieved. 
The righteousness that we have has been given to us. It has been put into our account. Amen. But he declared us righteous, which means, watch this family, we didn't walk into this world righteous. Thank you, Lord. It was put into, it was deposited into our account. Yeah, thank you. He imputed righteousness to us. Which means, watch this family, we wasn't looking for on the deposit. We wasn't looking for the ACH. Okay. <laughs> it was divinely deposited into our account. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, here it is. Family, uh, You, we have some believers, and it may be us, that is too concerned about our rights. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, I got right. I got right. No, before God, the only right that we have is to be dead. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to talk about rights, <laughs> that's the only right that we have is to be somewhere sleeping in our grave. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Yeah, you have those saints, family, who, um, family, God have asked of us to have expectations. But he did not ask for us to have entitlement. Ooh, yeah. Because when we start bringing up our rights before God, expectation has left the room. Now here we go with our entitled self. And aren't you glad that God doesn't take life from us when we get that spirit of entitlement and come before him? Lord, I got rights. Lord, so you really want to talk about your rights? You really want to talk about rights right now? I don't think you want to talk about that right now. He, oh, I love this mic, y'all. It's working real good. Um, yeah, yeah. He's saying, family, watch this, that Job is saying, I want to get something. Jackie Jones, he, he said, I, I want to get something. I want to gain something from this relationship. Ooh, family, Job is saying, oh, Lord, in so many words, I have a relationship with you. To the point where I feel entitled to what I expect that you should give. Here it is, family. Now I understand. Ernie, now I understand why Job had to suffer the way he did because he needed to get some arrogant dross off of him. He needed to get his entitlement spirit burnt off of him. Now I understand. I hear you. I hear y'all. I hear you, son. I, I hear you on Facebook. I hear you on Zoom. Well, Pastor, you have to understand that Job is frustrated, and quite simply, yes, he is, but because he's frustrated, it doesn't mean that he has to be foolish. All right now. Amen. Just because we're going through right. and just because we're frustrated doesn't mean we have to lose our marbles. You understand? Amen. Amen. Some scholars. Mr. Perkins find it problematic that Elihu was quite harsh with Job to say that Job, um, you put words in Job's mouth, but I had to ask the question, did they look at the previous transcript of the conversation? When we look at the transcript of Job's conversation, we discover that Elihu was not in left field in his thinking. Job 9, 14 through 15. Job 19 and 6. Watch well, what Job says, y'all. Y'all ready? Job actually says, I'm, I'm paraphrasing for us to get us to understand what Elihu was listening, listening to. He said, I have done more for God than he ever done for me. What? Oh, what? That when the accounts are balanced, he will be a debtor to me. Whoa. Okay. Um, as if Job, watch this, believed that his services had been undervalued and his faults had received greater punishment than they do deserve. Elihu was saying, Job, you taking an inappropriate look at this suffering. Here it is, Willie. Uh, here goes Job. Oh, uh, God, listen. Uh, I'm Job, and I. You know, so many words. I, I sacrificed, made sacrifice for my kids. I brought them up in church. Uh, right, me and on. Mrs. Joe, we go to church every day. 
I work, Lord. I, I have given of my sacrifices, and now here comes suffering uh, comes by a divine FedEx package that I didn't even ask for, nor did I order. All right. Amen. Lord, where it comes. Right. Listen, this punishment is greater than what my guilt merits. This inappropriate look. How many of us will agree? Come on, just look at me. If you, you can't say amen, just blink at me. Um, we have been like that. Like, Lord, this is Amen. more than uh, I'm not entitled. No, 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 Lord. I go to church. I've been in church for 30, 40 years. Why does all oh, this got to happen to me? And the Lord has said, I got to put you in the oven because you get beside yourself. <laughs> I got to burn some things off of you because if I don't, you're going to make a fool of yourself. Hmm. Family, how many of us know some people um, in church that got that entitlement spirit? Yeah. Thinking that if I pay my 10% and if I come in my uniform, if I show up on volunteer day and all of this, I am exempt from suffering. The devil is alive. <laughs> None of us are exempt from suffering. The Bible promised pain to us. Not only does the Bible promise that pain will come, but he also, the Bible also promised that there's a purpose behind the pain that we go through. Amen. 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 Family, now Elihu, <laughs> I love his argument. Lady Carol, I love his argument because what he does is he just don't fly off the cuff. He bring in some evidence. He's a good attorney, if you will. He, he bring in some evidence and make sure that he put his case the way it needs to be. Um, Ellie, he reminds me of a good Perry Mason. Yeah. And so, you know what? I'm going to find out some things. And then Perry Mason will, on um, the way he was crafty, he'll make them tell them themselves while they're standing there. I did it! Yeah, I know you did. All along, I just want to make sure yeah, that I craft this case. He's crafting you all this case. He uses family a um, Hebraic term here, Deacon Darrell, when he talks about um, this justice or what's right, right? Miss Pop. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. Bring back my memory. Yeah, Miss Pop. It is a um, judicial term, which means. Um, here it is, family. Elihu is saying, are you saying that you are judicially right in coming before God? Are you saying that you can bring your case before God? Are you saying you are willing to argue with the all-knowing, all-powerful God? Joe, I need you to go somewhere and sit down. <laughs> Amen. Because you don't have the power nor the authority to bring charges, hallelujah, against God. Man. That's right. Family, that's Amen. why we have to be careful that when we go through what we go through, when we step into that courtroom, don't bring no charges up against God because we don't want our charges to be brought up against us. Amen. 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 So I'm going to play it safe. Lord, do what you're going to do. <laughs> exactly. Lord. Do, do, Lord, forgive me for coming up to you and asking you questions. All right. Let, thank you, Miss. Let your will be done and let me get out of the way. Here it is, family. I know that when we get in our feelings, I know we got emotions, but we have the power to put boundaries around our emotions and feelings when it comes before Almighty God. No longer should we use a skill. Well, Pastor, I'm just human. I understand that fact, but you need to put some fixes around your humanity. So you won't get out of bounds with God. Amen. 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 Y'all, this is good. This is on my Amen. first point. Ooh, we. He says, after he tells Job, you took an inappropriate look. Now, here it is, Tim Jones. I had to use a school word. He said, now you are to take an introspective look. Okay. Verses 5 through 8. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, thank you. You need to look within. Here it is. Watch this, family. He said, look up into the sky and see the clouds high above you. Verse um, 6. And if you sin, how does that affect God? If you sin again and again, what effect would it have on him? If you're good, 
Is this some great gift to him? What could you possibly give him? No, your sins affect only people like yourself, and your good deeds only also affect only humans. <laughs> Here it is, family. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's verses five through eight. If y'all taking notes, yeah. Yep. He asked. He asked Job to look into the heavens. Mm -hmm. He asked him, uh, Carlos. He asked him to look into the heavens, and the point. He is trying to make is that Job is, I mean, God is higher than Job. Uh -huh. Watch this family. He's trying, he's trying to, Ellie, he was trying to get Job to understand that you've been looking on ground level. That's why you've been thinking the way you've been thinking. Because your mind has been in the dirt. Your mind has been low down. <laughs> now, you got to turn your look and when we take a look up, it calls us to look within. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel, Digga Daryl, that the reason why some people don't want to look within is because they've been looking where their flesh has been, down low or low down. Mm. God is saying, look up. How many of us can say, Pastor, you know what? Life has changed for me when I start looking up. Yeah. yeah, I thought I had a few more amens right there. Uh, life has changed yeah. when I start looking up. Amen. And you want God to know, I want Job to know that God's ways are higher yes. than his mm -hmm. ways. God's ways of doing things is much higher than how we do things. Now, verse 6. Elihu poses some deep questions here. Um, later Q, he said, what impact does a man's sin have on God's ways or God's character? Okay. And what does God gain from a man being righteous? Okay. In some ways, Elihu's argument is risky, y'all. However, this is one of those times when I think he has a point. The way of thinking, this way of thinking makes us wonder why do we do what we do? It might result in a negative attitude that nothing counts, which is definitely not what God wants us to feel. Sin separates people from God. Right, right. Yes, and what says you all, sin does have an effect on God because it makes him angry. And God wants people to avoid it. You remember Genesis 6 and 6? So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. Yep. And it broke his heart. Yep. Psalm 78 and 40. Oh, how often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved his heart in that dry wasteland. Talking about the Israelites. Mm. Family. However, when we do what God requires of us to do, and live the way he wants us to live, God is glad because it helps to advance his kingdom. Amen. 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 Elihu does have a point. There's some more to yeah. this question. Elihu does have a point, however, watch this, with or without any individual human activity, God's goal will be fulfilled. Watch this, yes, family. Yes, um, yes. There's nothing Amen. that we can do that will alter God's way of doing it. Amen. Amen. God is saying, I'm going to still be God and do what I need to do. It's not predicated on you. That's right. That's right. I will work above you. I will work around you if I can't work through you. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Uh, and, yeah, that go to entitlement spirit again. Well, if I ain't on the program, it ain't gonna be right. Well, if I don't go on the program, it ain't gonna be right. If I don't fry the chicken, it ain't gonna be right. Watch this. All you got to do is just hurry up and die. And watch this. When you die, we're gonna have a good home going serve for you. We're gonna have some cake and punch and that chicken that you did not fry and put you right on in your home chest and see you right on the glory. And guess what? After all that's over with, 
after all those flowers are thrown out of here, and after the obituaries get folded and gone up out of here, the kingdom will still go on. All right, now. Make it plain. Family. God is saying, listen, if I can't work in you, I will work around you and above you. I don't need you. I just decided to make you so that you can have a relationship with me. Watch this. If you just go away, that's fine because I got enough esteem about myself that I don't need you. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad I made you, but I don't need you. And you got some people, family, walk around thinking that they're God's best gift to the world. Ooh-wee! With your prideful, arrogant, entitled self. Family. He's saying, uh, the key aspect is that Elihu wanted Job to grow, watch this, outside of himself. Watch this. Ernie, Job had become ingrown. And since he had become ingrown, watch this, he was causing more damage to himself. And what God had to do is he had to send some suffering to take out that ingrownness in him. I made that word up here. That ingrownness in him so that he can be able to grow outwardly. Family, this may be a severe criticism of Job, but it also makes a point that it will be helpful to us all to not be like Job. That when we go through, here we go. We sit here, we done broke out our resume. Well, Lord, here I am again. I'm going through, and I know you upstairs, and you can see that I'm going through. So let me remind you, as if you call amnesia, of what the things that I have done for you. No, you don't want to pull that out. Put that resume back in the file. Because Man. if he pull out his. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might as well just go ahead and just go through what you're going through. Family. He tells us about this inappropriate look, right? We just look at that, verses 1 through 4. He tells about this introspective look, right? How we ought to look within so that we can get the help that we need, verses 5 through 8. Now he tells us, family, about an inspirational look. Yeah, 9 through 16. He says, people cry out. When they are oppressed, they groan beneath the power of the mighty. Yet they don't ask, where is God, my creator, the one who gives songs in the night? Where is the one who makes us smarter than the animals and wiser than the birds of the sky? And when, the cry, and when they cry out, God does not answer because of their pride. But it is wrong to say God doesn't listen, to say that the Almighty isn't concerned. You say you can't see him, but he will bring justice if you only wait. Verse 15, you say he does not respond to sinners with anger and is not greatly concerned about wickedness. But you are talking nonsense, Job. You have spoken like a fool. <sighs> Y'all, this got some gravy to it. <laughs> Here it is. Elihu is telling Job that he wishes he would look past himself and begin searching out God. Mm. Family, in verse 9, Elihu makes the argument that when we find ourselves in difficult conditions, we frequently cry out for assistance, right? However, not often do we want the one who is providing that assistance. Oh, I said something deep right there, y'all. Yeah. Um, how many of us, come on, let's be honest here. We in therapy right now. Amen. How many of us have gone to God for a temporary relief of something that we don't want to permanently repent from? Cool. All right now. How how many of us have gone to God for a temporary relief? God, I just want you to relieve this pain. Just for a moment so I can go back to it. What has caused this pain? God is saying, are you coming to me just for relief? Or are you coming to me want to get permanent repentance 
so that you won't have to come back to me so much for the relief in the same place that you have pain in. <sighs> He's saying, family, He's telling Job, Job, this is how you've been coming to God. Lord, I need you to fix it. Lord, I need you to touch it. Lord, I need you to deliver me from it. And the Lord said, if I deliver you from it, will you repent from it? Family, God is the only one that is on top of things. Amen. <laughs> Can I say it again? God is the only one that is on top of things. Watch this, you all. Amen. Every one of us desires solutions but we don't want to give proper respect to the one who provides the solution. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. It is the pleasure of Job that reasons this, right? Job is saying, I don't want the pain, Virginia. He says, I want the pleasure. Lord, I want you to be. Here it is, y'all. Y'all ready? This is going to be kind of rough ride, but this is the way the Lord told him to put this car together. I want you, Lord, to be my divine Santa Claus. All right. I just want the gift, but I don't want the giver. Ooh, Lord oh. mercy. Yes. Yes. Job was complaining and talking to God as if God was his personal servant. Some of us is guilty of this as well, praying to God as if he's our spiritual bellhop or personal waiter. Thinking that he has to drop everything to come and see about us and fulfill our request. Can I help y'all all today? Amen. Yes, he will come, but he will come when he good and ready and with what he has for us. Whether, watch this, we like it or not. Amen. 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 Family, we must not only pray for deliverance from God, but in our prayer, we must offer the deliverer thanks, mm -hmm. adoration, yeah. and compliment. Amen. Amen. That's right. This inspirational look that, that Elihu gives to Job, he starts talking about family, how people cry out, right, when they're oppressed, and mm -hmm. Lord, they're groaning because it's just too heavy. Mm -hmm. But then, watch this family, they forget about. The fact that while they're going through what they're going through, Ernie, God is there. Their creator is there, verse 10, and he's the one that will allow us to sing in the night. Mm. Y'all, some of the best songs that we have ever sung mm -hmm. has been at night. Yeah, when we have gone through the dark nights of our souls, we have found ourselves singing. And here it is. Um, Deacon Darrell, you appreciate this right here. That's why I love the blues. Uh, because watch this. The blues uh, is not just depressing, but all the blues can deliver you from something. Amen. Because what it is, family, is that these artists have, watch this, went through some dark nights. Right. And they took their dark nights and they put it to music. And here we are. We're like, hey, yeah. yes, this is my jam. <laughs> Because they understood that we have to sing in our suffering. All right, man. We have to sing in our storms. We have to sing in our situation. Can I ask you a question? Because I feel happy right here. Can I ask you a question? What's your song? Come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's your song? I can't get off this singing business. What is your song? Yeah. I know I mentioned to you all in some previous service that you ought to have a song. You ain't got to have no Stella, Grammy, Dove, and all of that. No. All you have to do is have your song. Listen, if you can't find one on YouTube, you can make one up. You know, we some creative people. We some creative people. We can invent some stuff out of nothing. You hear me? And we can find some words and put them together. And you like, this don't make sense. This ain't your song. <laughs> Get out of my lyrics. This, this ain't your song. Family, we need to praise God that he gives us a voice while we're going through what we're going through. Why is this you all? So that he gives us a voice so that we can be victorious and not victims. 
That's what will help us in the dark nights of our soul, honey, if we turn around and can sing to the Lord. Jackie Jones, sing your song. Oh. Yeah, I, I had to put you back in the sermon. I, I know I told you that earlier, just in case. In the previous sermon, just in case you forgot, I want to remind you. Sing Amen. your song. Amen. Family, he, he, he's, telling, he's telling Job, he said, listen, Job, not only are you to sing in your situations, but you must remember that God has made you smarter then the animals. Here it is, family. Watch this. Suffering is a curriculum that will make us spiritually smart. Yes. Oh, I said so right there. Oh, yeah. Look, suffering is a spiritual uh, curriculum that will make us spiritually smart. Here it is, family. I love it because, watch this, Ernie. When he takes us through this class, ah, there's some information there that we need. But some people want to skip that class, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> like, um, I'm going to home ec. Uh, suffering 101, I don't want no part of that one. Yeah, but we have to go through it to get the nuggets and the necessary nutrition that we need to go on a little further. Come on. Preach. Amen. Family. He said, Joe, what you're going through, it, the suffering is not for naught. You, you're going through it because God wants you to graduate above where you are. Joe, 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 Joe. The Lord wants to lift you from this low place. You you got some pride. I know you know the Lord, but you got a little pride in you. You got a little arrogance in you. Know, you got a little self-rising, you know, flower in you. You know, yeah, he got to take some of that out of you. Cook it out. He got to, yeah, thank you. He got to cook it out of you. You understand? He got to burn it out. Yeah. Um, here it is, family. Now, Elihu seems to take a turn. He, he seems to take a turn. Verses 12 to 13. He, now he, he says, okay, Job, watch this. God would not listen to an empty cry. Wait a minute. Elihu, wait. A cry is a cry, right? <laughs> but now he's saying, Job, the cry that you've been doing has been empty because you've been crying out of a place of entitlement. You've been crying out of a place of self-righteousness. You've been crying out of a place of arrogance and pride. So it is empty. Now, this looks as if, family, and a legitimate argument against Job. Job had been crying out to God. He'd been craving for a solution and assistance from God, but Job has no longer obtained it yet. Family, here it is. Uh, you write this down. When it comes to our prayers, it's not that God has a hearing problem, but we may have a heart problem. <laughs> when it comes to our prayers, it's not that God has a hearing problem, but we may have a heart problem. Here it is, family. Before we pray, before we open our mouths and come before God, we need to ask ourselves this diagnostic question. What is my motive or reason behind what I'm asking God for right now. Mm. James 4 and 3 says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. He said, King James says, we ask what? A miss. You only want what will give you pleasure. Mm. Lord have mercy. Elihu was saying that when we cry out to the Lord, we have to make sure that our hearts are in check. Because why well, see you all, some of us, we pray. And as we pray, it's like we're telling, telling on the person that we're praying about, we're telling God on them, God, if you don't get my husband, I'm going to do something. God, if you don't do, if you don't come right now, something's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> check our hearts before we engage our mouth before God. God is saying, you ain't got to tell me on them. You, okay. you know, you ain't got to tell on them. I already know what they're doing. But how are you going to handle what they're doing to you? Yeah, yeah you want to tell on them. But let's talk about your EKG and your x-ray. All right. It's messed up too. So 
Yeah. So everybody in this whole equation is jacked up. So I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to take care of that person that you try to tell them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Before we tell somebody, we must keep in mind that a divine eye has has our x-ray and our files and they files too, and looking at them all at the same time. Yeah. God ain't going to close his eye on your file and open his to the person you telling on. <laughs> he sees yours too. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Um, verse 14. He says, Joe, I need you to take this in consideration. God wants you to be patient. He wants you to be patient. He, he, he wants you. Uh, Y'all remember the old saints that say we need to have the patience of Job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he said, Job, stop being in a hurry for a solution. Just sit in your suffering a little while and let God do some cooking on you. <laughs> yeah. You have to be patient. Family, while we're going through what we're going through, God is saying, stop rushing me. Stop rushing the cooking process. All right. Uh, yeah. When you when you cooking something, you can't rush it. Um, especially with cake, you trying to turn the fire high and you trying to rush it against all it's all good on the outside there. And but you go to cut that bad boy off and stuff coming oozing out of there, you rush it. <laughs> it may look dirt on the outside, but all it takes is a knife to go through it, and the evidence is not on the outside, but the evidence is on the inside. Job, I need you to be patient because God is working on you. Family, we are to ask God, God, keep me in as long as you want me to be in so that you can work on me. Yes, Lord. Instead of saying, Lord, hurry up and get me up out of here. No, you need to stay in there. Yes, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us. Yes, Lord. states that, Job, this is the case that I want to present to you, right? That you need to just wait this out. Family, I hear Lady Q and I hear Virginia. Virginia got the bowl. Lady Q, like, okay, Pastor Drew been preaching good. Now wrap this on up. I need a hefty box. Here it is. Simple. When it comes to suffering, we must take another look at it in a different way. Suffering is one of those methods God used to develop us. Family, when he turns up the heat, turn up your praise. Amen. Amen. When Amen. God turns up the heat, yes. turn up your praise. Can I say it again? Yes. When God turns up the heat, turn up your praise. Amen. We must keep that embedded in our spirit and store it away. That when suffering and pain comes, what is stored in us will help shape how we handle whatever we're going through. Amen. So family, Amen. he Elihu says, listen, Joe, stop looking at this with an inappropriate look. Mm -hmm. You need to have an introspective look, and then that will lead you to have an inspirational look at what you are going through. So family, mm -hmm. take a deeper look. Of why you're going through what you're going through. Instead of saying why, here it is, Malia. Two things. What is this going to teach me? And how I'm going to learn from this? 